As discussed in the previous one, we're looking always at the idea of how the constraints of the environment help a person learn how to play the game by gradually increasing the complexity. The learner who has engaged in the task then will actually start to adapt their, their behaviours, their movement patterns, as they learn to coordinate it to the constraints of the rules, the space, and the type of equipment that's being used. The environment can always be changing. As you'll see in any of the activities, the environment gradually increasing in size increases the amount of space that the learner has to deal with, but also by increasing space gives them more options. As they learn that, the coordination of control of the object, they start to develop the skill of where to hit the ball, as they learn the skill of where to go to cover where the ball could be hit to. This is the notion of evolving, evolving the environment. The next day, game for drives is the space adapt game. The idea here is to take your blue back marker we have here and to move it back four times until it becomes the back line. So you start basically one stride away from the service line. With your opponent, you basically play out the rally. The ball will be served into the court. The partner hit it back into the court. So that's two hits. At this point then, we rally with this marker being the back line, trying to keep the ball inside the court. As that is happening, the same thing on the other side of the court will be happening simultaneously as the rally is going on. So you end up with the rallies looking like this, but landing inside the court. As soon as one of the players strikes the ball and it goes out, going too deep, then that means that this player on this side of the court wins the point. But by winning the point, it simply means that the back marker is moved back one stride. We then play the point again, rallying, but this time the red has a slightly bigger court to cover. So as they're playing, they will find that now they have to be careful of balls that are dropped short, which they have to run in for, because as soon as they return the ball into play, they have to get back to cover behind the back line, because the blue player on this side of the court can now strike the ball at their feet. And if they hit the ball at the person's feet, it makes it very much difficult if they don't get back in time to play that shot. The goal being, as you play this game, to get your back line to the back of the court first. So here is the summary of the key rules of this game. First of all, first of all, um, you must make sure that you serve and the ball is returned, then the point starts. So there's no service error and there's no return error. You cannot volley in this area here, which is the service box area. The ball must be allowed to bounce there. Whoever has the ball can serve, because there's no advantage given to the serve in this game. If you win the point, then your back line increases by one stride, working your way back four times to the baseline. There's a summary of the rule for space adapt. Now what will help you play this game? A good practice for this game, and particularly to focus in on base, is to set yourself up where you're rallying inside the court against the wall. So have a line on the wall and then a back line that the ball bounces to. So you get in the habit of basically being a hit in front of that line. As you're making the hit, you want the player to be moving to cover the ball as it comes in short, so as they hit it, playing the ball as it lands, but always getting back so they can play the shot from behind the back line, and basically returning each time, so they're always moving forward to the ball when they play. The critical idea of the base is that it gives you the chance to go forward. So this means that you're always making the decision to get back behind this back line. 
this back line being your critical part. A way of practicing it is as you're playing the game, is to work on the idea that as the ball is struck, so as it goes against the wall, just as it comes off the wall, you practice the idea of cover, which means you've returned and then you jump so that as the ball is bouncing, it actually, you can adjust to that bounce. The adjustment you make allows you to make sure that as you're playing the shot, you're always trying to play the stroke so the ball is actually dropping just in front of the body into that hitting zone just here. So as you play the shot, you're actually striking the ball and moving forward. Ideal height for this is usually located between the knee and the waist. So that type of height in front of the body is what you're trying to get the ball and we call that the hitting zone. A way to practice it in this game is to rally the ball so you can keep it going for say eight times in a row and then you move the line back and then try again to rally for eight times in a row. Each time focusing on using an adjustment and then working on the base and the base setting you up so you can see where the ball is going to go to make a decision about getting back to cover for the next shot. Then as the ball is coming off the wall, that's when you want to focus in on this idea of cover. So cover gives you the key notion of moving just as the ball is before it's about to bounce as it comes off the wall. So these movement patterns then facilitate your ability to cover the court when you play the game. To help transfer, transfer your practice against the wall into the court, the best idea is to actually start off where a player is playing throw-catch against a player who's got the bat. The same rules apply as before, that you're trying to win four points, and as you win the points, you move the marker back to the baseline. However, in this version of the game, the person who's the throw catcher, who's playing inside the half court area here, is trying to send the ball over the net to hit the target spot. By doing that, that means the returner, the bat, knows where the ball is going to go, and so is always locating themselves in a good base position, helping with their decision making. So now, as they're covering it, they are trying to win the point against the throw catcher who's sending it back but aiming for the spot. The throw catcher who wants to get the racket, the bat, tries to hit the spot. And if they can manage to hit the spot three times, they then get the bat. However, the batter, in this other court, is trying to win the point against the throw catcher if they can get four points, then they win the game by getting to the baseline. If they exchange, so this person becomes the hitter, the game resets and they start again. The critical part of this game is now this person is giving a consistent descent ball, but has to always think about covering the space, because this person is trying to hit to the places where throw catcher might have difficulty catching and sending the ball back. Wherever the ball is caught from, thrower has to send, but this person always knows that they're aiming towards this target. So they always know where to position themselves in relation to wherever the thrower might be sending the ball towards this target. So their movement is actually anticipating the target area of the thrower. This game really helps transfer the idea of base, but also all the other actions of decision making, cover and adjust. The last step in this progression is to play the space adapt game, but this time a batter against a throw catcher. And the idea is, can the person with the bat manage to win this point to get the back line here? The person who hasn't got the bat is trying to win the point in order to win the bat and try to play the game from that situation of more challenge. So now the idea would be you get long rallies because it becomes very difficult to 
to break the person down. But also the thrower can send to the spacers way more easily testing the ability of the person with the bat to use their base and effective decisions about where they think the target is when they're trying to cover the whole of the space, depending on where the person is throwing from. In particular, this will help this person to focus on cover. So as the person is striking the ball, they do a little jump step in the air. So as the ball leaves this bat, they're jumping. So as it arrives, they're ready to send, catch the ball and send it quickly to a space. The other element to this game is that this person can catch the ball before it bounces, therefore reducing the time for this person to recover. And immediately when they catch it, they can send it to a space where the bat is not, effectively starting to bring the idea of volley into the game. Likewise, this person, if they feel confident enough, can try to step in, not inside this area, but here, play a volley into the open spaces they can locate in the catcher's court. This effectively then gives the ability to transfer right back to the game we started. So now we turn back to our original game, where both players on each half of the court have a bat, and they're trying to win four points in a row to advance the ball, the back line, all the way back to the baseline. Of course, if space allows, the game could be played in the whole court with the same idea of rules, except the baseline is moving back as this back line advances back. But this will then create the situation where now the players are really trying to play around with where are the spaces on the court in order to cover where the ball is going to go. And it gives them a lot more work with angles, sending the ball to areas where the player isn't located. Effectively, that gives you the idea of space adapt.